Welcome to this brief introduction on the Expert Tool, a software program designed to visualize, test, and troubleshoot a smart structure solution. Applications in smart structure building operation can be very complex, and it isn't a simple task to see how objects are connected or to easily follow bindings. The Expert Tool is a standalone software application designed to help provide a visual look at your applications, objects, and bindings. Designed to help you visually troubleshoot and document your applications, the Expert Tool enables you to easily see connections between objects and to use that to assist you with testing and troubleshooting an application. You can use these diagrams to document how the application is structured. You can connect to a live system and watch or follow live values, which could be used to assist with commissioning or to find faults in the system. There are also some reporting options that allow you to document and validate your application. In a separate video, we will also show you how you can use the expert tool to compare configurations from two different points in time. The expert tool is available on the exchange. Simply search for expert tool. It's compatible with Smart Structure Solution versions 1.5 or later, and it works with XML exports, XPK files or backup files, or direct connections to ASs, ESs, or PCT or PCS projects. Let's have a look at the Expert Tool. Once installed, you can easily launch the Expert Tool from the Start menu or from an icon on your desktop. The Expert Tool user interface is very similar to those in other SBO programs. A system tree is on the left-hand side and different panes to view information are on the right-hand side in the workspace. I can connect to my databases in multiple ways. I can connect directly to a live server, any version of SPO 1.5 or greater, an AS, an ES, an ASP, or even a PCT or PCS project. I can open up existing XML export files and view the database that way, or I can actually open up a backup file or an XBK file from a backup of one of your devices or servers. Simply navigate to the file that you're looking for, click on the XPK file, and open it up. Once the expert tool loads the database, you'll notice the system tree looks very similar to, similar to a system tree in Workstation. In this particular case, we've opened up a backup of an ES with multiple ASs. And you can navigate through, viewing different information in the system tree. When you get to the piece of the application you would like to view, simply drag it into the right-hand pane. For instance, in this case, we'll take a look at this fan coil unit. I can drag the whole folder across. It provides me with some options. Once I hit OK, it draws the objects and all the connections. The AET will draw the objects and all the bindings in between them. I can use different zoom tools or mouse features to navigate through the database to see the different bits of information. If I hover over an object, it'll tell me what kind of object it is and display some information about it. So I can see the different types of objects. If I hover over one of the bindings, it'll show me the input and the end connection. So it's easy to quickly see where objects are connected and what objects they're connected to. If I click on an object in the right-hand pane, it's also highlighted in the system tree on the left-hand side. Likewise, if I click on an object in the system tree, it'll instantly navigate, it, navigate to it on the right-hand side. So I can quickly navigate through the various objects and bindings. If I want to clear the workspace or the flow view in this case, I can just hit the new button. With a clean workspace, again, I can pull in as much or as little information as I wish into my view on the right hand side. For instance, I could start with a single object, place it on my flow view, 
And then using these additional buttons here to add linked views, choose to add all the objects that are linked to it. So I could quickly build something that I could document. And there are out options to output this to different types of drawing formats. If I go back to my original view of this FCU in the flow view, I can also take a look at other views. For instance, the binding view. This particular view will show me sort of a tabular summary of all the objects and all their bindings from the information or from the part of the system tree that I pulled into the workspace. So it shows all the different bindings here. If there was anything in air, it would show it in a different color. And again, I can save all this output to different kinds of reports, a text file or an XLS file. If I had been connected to a live device, I could use the live data button to actually get the real-time values for these particular objects in both the binding view and the flow view. Since this is an XBK file, there's obviously no live values. The final view we'll show you is the report view. The report view is slightly different than the other views in the fact that you don't drag objects across to generate the report. Instead, there's a reports menu. In this case, we're going to show you an object list report. To run an object list report, you really have to define two things. First, what are the objects and their parameters that you want to report on? And secondly, what part of the system do you want to report on? So for instance, Let's say we want to generate a report on all of our alarms. Uh, maybe in this case to make sure all our alarm messages are set up properly. I can click on the alarm objects and you'll see that all the different parameters that are available show up here in my dialog. I could go through and pick exactly what ones or all of the different parameters I want to report on. I can also choose what standard columns I want to report on. So let's say in this case I want all my standard columns and I want to report on all the different alarm messages. Since these could be both analog and digital alarms, I'm going to get all the different alarm messages that are available, including my research reset message. If this is a report I think I'm going to generate often, I could actually save it as a preset. And then when I want to run it the next time, I can open that preset and all of my settings will already be in place. The last thing I have to do is choose what part of the system I want to report on. I can choose anywhere down to a single object or a single folder, in this case maybe a particular AES, and you can see when you highlight one, it'll tell you how many of those object types are available. In this case, let's just choose the whole system. And you'll see there's 124 objects uh, that are alarm objects available to report on. If we hit OK, it will generate that report and it will show that data in the report view. Once in the report view, I can review it here. I can sort on columns, so maybe I want to sort them all by type, and then check the alarm messages to make sure each type has the proper alarm message. Or, if I want, I can save that information out as an object report, either a PDF or an Excel file. So I can validate that all my alarm messages in this case have been set up correctly. That is a quick overview of some of the basic features of the Expert Tool. We hope you enjoyed the video, and we always appreciate any comments or questions you have about the tool. Please leave those comments or questions in the community under this posting. Thanks, and have a great day.